Okay, Hi, so everybody. So we had a, a little technical difficulties there for the first minute or so, but we're here now. Yeah, we're so excited to be here. And my name is Yang Yang. And I am Shu Jie Sheng, or Jason. Yeah, we're really, really excited to be here. I'm the founder of YoYo Chinese, and uh, Jason is our product manager. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. We're good. So today we're having something really exciting for you, and we're going to talk about how to express emotions in a tonal language like Chinese. Yeah, this is a really interesting topic, actually, and it's something that lots of people ask us, so we really wanted to do a hangout about it and discuss it. But uh, before we jump into that, we just wanted to remind everybody that right now is actually YoYoChinese.com's six-year anniversary. Six. Yeah, and so <laughs> there's a big sale going on on the website. Everything is 30% off, all of our courses. You can either purchase them level by level, or you can purchase the whole course at an even bigger discount. Um, and everything in the store, every single one, is 30% off. So it's a perfect time to start your Mandarin learning journey with us. Um, all you have to do is go to yochinese.com and you can find the information you need there. And just in case you don't know, six is a really, really lucky number in Chinese. That's why we're celebrating big this year. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so check it out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, throughout the, the, the lecture, we're like conversation we're going to have, right? going to talk about this topic. And if you have any questions or personal examples mm. you want to give, to, uh, give to us, please leave your comments in the chat section. And also, we after our lecture, we're going to have a Q&A so you can ask us lots of questions that way. And also, please tell us who you are, where yes. you're from, and why you're learning Chinese. We'd love to say hi to you. Yeah, we love learning about our users, where they come from, and just share anything you like with us in the comments. During the Hangout itself, uh, we have a couple people in the, the chat who will answer some questions. And then when we cut to the Q&A at the very end, Yang Yang and I will answer personally as well. Yeah, so leave us your questions. All right, let's like get to the topic. So we decided to do this after having been asked about it a couple times. Um, but more recently, we had a commenter on our YouTube, one of our YouTube videos right. ask, so in English, we use tone to establish emotion, sarcasm, jokes, etc. Well, how do you do that in Chinese when the tones are already established? So this is a question lots of people have when you mm -hmm. tell them Chinese is a tonal language. Right? People think, oh, well, I use the tone of my voice in English to express myself, so how can I possibly do that in Chinese? Isn't it impossible then to express your emotions and express your tone of voice? Um, and that's a really good question. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that the idea of a tone in Chinese, right? So when we say first tone, second tone, third tone, is not exactly the tone of your voice. Right? It's more, it's actually technically the pitch contour, but what it is is the way the word sounds in terms of its pitch. So, for example, if we use like ma, right, in mm. all four tones, could you give us an oh, example? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. That would be ma, 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 ma. So these are the four tones in pinyin in Chinese. And yeah. it's quite different from the tone of voice that you are talking about. Exactly. And so we can kind of demonstrate here that ma, second tone, for example, could also be said in an angry or upset way, right? While retaining the actual tone mm -hmm. from from the second tone, right? Right. So maybe let's try some like real examples to show our students actually in Chinese we do um, have emotion. We, we, we can actually use Chinese tones to express different emotions, right? Yeah. But I think that for what the students is saying is that I, I think he's right. When people express their emotions, then in Chinese, we don't change the tones. Tones yeah. are the fundamentals. If you change the tones, you do change the pinyin tones, you do change the meanings. But in English, you do have more than one way exactly. of using the pitch to to have that emotion, to express your point of view, right? You have so many different ways. You know, for example, you can raise your voice, or you can make it very loud or very quick, right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like uh, before we, when we were preparing for this hangout, we were talking about the word like stop, right? So if you said in English, stop, right? That's a second tone, but it sounds like maybe you're being more patient, like stop, like you're, you haven't hit your limit yet, but you're about to become upset. But if you said stop it, right? That's fourth tone, and that's you've already hit your limit, and you're, in, you're already you know, angry, and you've told the person to stop it. So this commenter is thinking, oh, well, that's what I do in English. I, I use stop it or stop it 
in a different tone. So how could I possibly do that in Chinese? And what you're saying is you have all these other ways to express emotion, right? So for example, let's use that word ting, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you can tell me in Chinese, how would you express like a patient stop? Maybe to a child or a dog or something that's doing something and you're not super upset with them yet, but you want them to stop. So how, okay, how would sure, you do that? Yeah. Sure. So ting means stop as the second tone, ting, right? So if i very patient, I'll be ting, right? So basically I just use the, in, I prolong my voice a little mm, bit, ting. right? And then, Similar to yeah, English, right? Ting, stop it, right? Ting. So you see, I'm using the second tone, but I'm I'm doing the patient, like, mm, like a voice. longer ting, kind yeah. of like mm -hmm. stop it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a second tone. So what if you were totally out of patience and you're upset and you want to say stop it right now? And how would you do that using that word ting? Ting. Right, see, like I'm saying like a shorter and yeah. louder, right? So it's the contour of the second tone is still there. It still rose up. Ting, right? But the, sh the word is shorter because I'm upset, because I'm out of patience. Yeah, so the tools that we don't have as Chinese people when it, when it comes to emotions is to change our pitch. We can also ting or yeah. ting, right? Because then that becomes different uh, meaning, right? Ting yeah. means like you listen to something. But there's still so many other things we can do. So now we're talking about the general, like so how, how, how similar Chinese and English are related to each other when it comes to expressing your emotions. But there's something unique about Chinese that we're going to talk about a little bit later that we can use something called adding extra words to express emotions, which is quite unique to the Chinese language. Yeah, basically, uh you can't rely on changing, like you said, just to summarize it again, on changing the, the tone, the pitch that much in Chinese, right? So as a Chinese language learner, you do need to focus on having correct and accurate Chinese tones first and foremost. So even if you're angry or whatever, you're happy, you're sad, whatever emotion you're feeling, you can't let that change the tone of the word. Exactly, the, right? the tone has to stay the same, but there are different things that we can do to, to bring that emotions that we're gonna talk about later. Yeah. And also, I really just don't want to really emphasize this, so please don't get intimidated by tones, right? At the very beginning, you probably are trying to associate, okay, ni hao, okay, third tone, third tone, and then you're trying to associate each tone with a word you're saying, and you feel very unnatural and almost sounds like a rope like a robot, right? right? Yeah. But then this is just like an initial hurdle you need to overcome. But but after that, you're going to you're going to get used to it and you'll be used to this like a new way of of speaking mm. and thinking about the language. Yeah, that foundation of accurate tones and being able to pronounce them correctly and enunciate Chinese correctly is the most important thing. And then once you have that foundation, you get the exposure to other people speaking Chinese. You can kind of learn how to add emotion into it without sacrificing the integrity of your tones. So, for example, like uh, let's think of a sentence, 我不要. Mm -hmm, so that's, mm -hmm. you know, 我, meaning me or I, third tone. And then 不要, second tone, fourth tone, meaning not want. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want. Mm -hmm, 我不要. 我不要, uh -huh. And this, you have to maintain the integrity of the tones, but you can say it yes. in you, all kinds of different ways, right? So yes. maybe Yang Yang can, uh, you know, give us some examples of what it sounds like to hear a Chinese person say this in an upset way or an impatient way yeah, or whatever. Yeah, give me a prompt and I will say that in, the, right. in a different setting. So maybe say... Like, 我不要 means I don't want it, okay? Let's just try that. So say 我不要 in a very, you're very polite and patient. Maybe you're in a fancy restaurant and they're asking you if you would like some pepper. Uh, oh, onto your salad. Oh, 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 oh. So you can see, right? She's okay. not sacrificing the tones. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, but I your supplemented body with my language. yeah, my smile and then my oh, oh, yeah. sort of like 温柔的声音, mm. like a gentle voice, right? Yep. But yeah. let's say you're walking down the street in Shanghai. I don't know if they still do this because it was years ago uh, when, when they used to do this all the time. And they're trying to sell you DVDs. Watch bag DVD, you know, and somebody's trying to hawk you goods and they won't leave you alone. And you want to say, I don't want it. 我不要. Mm. Right? So see, like, well, how am I saying it? I'm saying it louder. The yao 
gets a prolonged a yeah, little bit, right? Yeah, 我不要。我不要。So each one is enunciated a little bit more strongly. You know, before I can just say 我不要 Maybe the the range dynamics is around like this much.、Mm. But if I just want to express my emotions, maybe the range dynamics become like louder. 我不要。我不要。You know? Yeah, like the the tone of the yao, right? It's a falling tone. Exactly. But you can choose to make it fall from really high to really low. Exactly. To emphasize the the yao. 我不要 Right. So、mm -hmm. it's still a falling tone.、Exactly. The contour, the change from top to bottom, still happens, but you have expressed this more emphatic "biao," right?、Exactly. I don't want it. Uh huh. Give me one more example. Maybe、um, we can use this one too. So yeah, how about 随便 Okay, 随便 Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. This is a great word, first of all. Oh yeah, 随便 Let's、uh, write that down. Yeah, it's it's a really <laughs> good word, first of all, because it just means like whatever or something like that,、uh, or maybe like either way. Uh, and you can say it in response to, "Hey, what do you want to eat? Where do you want to go?" You can say, "Oh, sui bian,"、mm -hmm. right? But it's second tone, fourth tone. But maybe you could end up saying this in a really frustrated way,、okay. right? Like if、uh, maybe I keep asking you what you want or what should we eat. Me and my wife have this problem all the time. Like, "Niao chu shi ma?" What do you want to eat? And both of us are feeling like I don't know, so we'll just say, "Oh, sui bian." So you're like、uh, getting impatient and just、oh, a little bit annoyed. Sui bian, sui bian, yeah. So just leave me alone, okay? Whatever, right? Yeah. Sebia, sebia, right? So it's really like expressed in my facial. Yeah, and you can、impressions. you can pick up on that feeling of you know impatience. Oh, sebia, kind of like a, ugh. That part at least is very similar to English, right?、Mm -hmm. But if you were being polite, um,、mm, sebia, sebia, yeah, sebia, right? Yeah. So you see, like when we have different emotions, then tone tone of voice is still the same. Pitch right,、yeah. the same Chinese tones. We don't change that. And one thing I think we should like, we want to remind students is that please don't import. Import <laughs> yes, your English, English intonation tone or tone of voice to to Chinese. This can be really funny if you do this, right? So, for example, with sui bian, it means whatever, and we always、oh, whatever. But you can't go sui bian. Well, you oh yeah sui bian. Because then if you if you do that, as you can hear, you're changing the tone. So if you do totally 100% import that, you know whatever that ever has a specific <laughs> tone to it, and if you say sui bian, that <laughs> bian is no longer bian, That's right? That's no longer Chinese. And so you can't just directly import English intonation into Chinese because it will screw the tones up. Right. I once heard a student ask me, "Dui?" Dui? You know, yeah, right, because、uh, in Chinese. D U I fourth tone means right. So the, that student was、uh, wanting to ask me right. So then he changed the the word like, 对 to 对 But I'm like what?、Mm. Because then that becomes like a non Chinese sound that I could not recognize. And this is actually a perfect segue into the second part of this、uh, discussion that we want to have, which is if you want to make the word 对 into a question in Chinese, you have to add 么 Mm -hmm. So this is a thing that you do in Chinese to. It's sometimes adding emotion, but it's also to add like a, you know turning something into a question is kind of like an emotion. It's kind of a, a you can change the the intonation, the implication of a sentence, right, with extra words.、Mm -hmm. So you have to say doi ma. Mm-hmm.、Right? Exactly. So you cannot、yeah. say make, like fourth tone doi、yeah. becomes doi. Okay, you won't. You can't do that. So this is just just gives you a taste of what we're gonna talk about, right? Yeah. So that's the uniqueness of Chinese that we sometimes use the extra words to express emotions. Yeah. So we're gonna give you a few examples, and these are some of the examples you can actually hear on a daily conversation from Chinese people. These are the words that you feel like. Why are you guys just adding a few、mm. extra words here and there, and then? And Yeah, but but what Chinese people are doing is that all these little extra words are adding the emotions, not necessarily meaning, but the emotions. Yeah, before before we actually go into those about the first part,、uh, I just want to mention. So as a language learner, as a Chinese language learner yourself, when we tell you, oh, you know, you can just express your emotion and retain the tones, it's so easy. Don't worry too much about that. It's not. It's not actually something you need to necessarily think of as. Oh, I'm going to sit down and practice this.、Mm -hmm. But just pay, kind of pay attention to native speakers, and when they're upset, how do they sound when they say something? And try to keep a mental log of. Okay, so like, 
you know, uh, I heard someone say, booyow, and then you can just copy that and say, booyow, and know that that's the angry way to say it, right? Mm -hmm. And so the best way to really absorb this lesson, I think, is through native speakers actually speaking, not through textbook dialogues or actors recording things for like in very stilted kind of official language, right? You want to hear people on the street or be on the street yourself and be immersed. And so in our courses, we make sure in the conversational mm -hmm. course that like 50% of the lesson, of often more, sometimes more, is breaking down dialogues from real people speaking Chinese. And then that exposure doesn't just give you exposure to the language in terms of the vocab and the grammar, but it gives you exposure to how Chinese sounds when people are being very sincere and touched or very upset and whatever. Um, and so, yeah, point being that to, to get better at this, both understanding it and being able to reproduce it yourself, the best thing you can do is watch and listen and use real people speaking Chinese, not just uh, textbook dialogues. Right, so in just a minute, we're gonna show you some clips from our UICC course, uh, Upper Intermediate course, uh, upper uh, intermediate Conversational course. You're gonna see how real Chinese people say simple sentences mm -hmm. with emotions, and then we're gonna break it down, right? So before we do that, I also just wanna mention something real quick. Uh, before the hangout, when we're making, when we're having a discussion, Jason mentioned something really interesting. He was saying that maybe sometimes when you practice a word, maybe try your try to say it with a different mm -hmm. emotions, right? Of course, keeping the 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 right tone. For example, if you're practicing 随便, you can think about oh, when you're annoyed, how do you say it? 随便, or when you're like. Mm, happy, happy. Yeah, right? So you can practice, but don't change the tones, right? Keep the second tone and fourth tone unchanged, but add some emotions. That will help, you know, put yourself in a context. I think that's, that's pretty effective. Yeah, I, I like, when I was learning Chinese, I was living in China, so I had the opportunity to go out and, you know, use it like that. And if you have that opportunity, that's great. But if you don't, I think the closest thing you can do is act it out as though you are. It might mm. sound silly and feel kind of weird, but Pretend like you're an actor, you know, and you have these lines that you're learning and try to act them out in all different kinds of expressive ways. And that will really help, you know, solidify the word, I think, in your memory to creating a more funny story for yourself. Absolutely. Screaming in your car. <laughs> yeah. Strange words. Sway <laughs> Right. All right. So uh, now let's talk about the uniqueness of Chinese language how we express emotions using extra words. Yeah, I would say we do this in English as well, to some extent. So this isn't something that's completely unique to Chinese, but what we're saying is that this phenomenon of using these extra little words that don't really have great translations, but add extra emotion and feeling to the, to the words and to the sentences is really important to expressing yourself in Chinese because you can't take that changing of the tones too far. So like we were saying before in English, you could say, right, or you could say, right. You know, and, and that's totally fine because it's just the meaning of the word is not in the tone, it's in the, the spelling and mm -hmm. pronunciation. Whereas in Chinese, you can't do that. You so it's can, like your hands are tied in some way when it comes to emotions. Exactly. But we invented something new to sort of like, uh, the, what, what's that word? Uh, yeah, to, to re-add, like to add more emphasis or whatever, yeah, to, to make it easier to express emotions so with, let's see an without example. relying on changing the tone. Yeah, so let's, let's see an example and then we'll see the video. All right. Let's do that, okay. So there's like this word, ke, right? Ke. So, you know, like you learn this, like how do you say cola? It's like ke le, right? So don't or worry. Ke yeah, ke yi, like you can or we're okay, right? So ke. So don't think too much about ke, but because sometimes we throw ke in the not doing something and make it something different. Okay, so let's say this is something that as a beginner mm. or like an intermediate, I'm sure you already know. 我不知道 means I, I don't know. I don't know, right? So, so when you say it very flat, it's like, I don't know, like, 我不知道. But in English, you have so many different ways of saying I don't know, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. That's my favorite one. Like, you can't look that up in a dictionary. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so let's say that you say I don't know really clearly, but with different um, sort of like emotions. In English, yeah? Yeah, in English. You're like, I don't know, right? And that's like the really like, Come on, emphatic, and that's kind of like fourth tone. I don't know. Right, right, okay. Right, so maybe. another, okay, so let's say, um, how do you say, like, do you, you also have this, right? Like, um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't right? know. So what does that mean? That means like, I think no it adds, way, I, I yeah, know, it, right? it adds more, uh, it, it, it adds more emphasis to the fact that you don't know 
and that you're confused yourself. I don't know. Like, why are you asking me? Exactly.、Right? Okay. So let's say you want to express that tone, right? In in Chinese. But you say, "I don't know." But then that doesn't really sound quite right to our Chinese native ears, right? Yeah. So how we do is that we add a little extra word, so something like this. And so you can hear, and this is the the really important thing here is that. Yang Yang is not really changing her voice that much, right? So if you say "wo bu zhi dao" and "wo ke bu zhi dao," the 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 tone of your voice doesn't even need to change that much. But by adding this "ke," you're doing what? Yeah, just by this adding this "ke," suddenly it sounds to our native ears that it means like there's no way I know, like there's no way I know,、mm. or like. I don't, I don't know. know. Just, why are you asking me? So there's it's all these like it's like a shortcut, like, right? Exactly. To that feeling of I I don't know without needing to necessarily use so much emotion and expression. Exactly. I can say 我不知道我不知道 I don't know 我可不知道 You see, I'm like my emotions are very sort of similar, but、yeah. simply by adding this one to our native navy native ears, there's there's so much more going on. You you might have picked up on something interesting about this if your mind went in the direction that my mind went when you're preparing for this,、uh, is that this is extra helpful for typing, for talking to people with text. Because、mm, in English we have to use like italics, right? Like I don't know. You have to like there, you can't really ex- if you're only relying on your tone of voice and not using words at all and not using these extra indicators. Then when you're texting with somebody, it's like what I I don't know the tone of this、That's、person. That's interesting. And it actually leads to really hilarious misunderstandings because the way I read the word I don't know and the way the person meant it when they texted it could be very very different. But you can avoid that in Chinese because you can add the k and it, it's, it's visible, right? There's an actual visible difference in the sentence. Um, so, so it's a、yeah. little bit like the ma, right? So、yeah. you, you can't really change the tone like your pitch. To have the, the different meaning, like to have、yeah. the different emotions, but you can add that little extra word. So "ke" is one one example. There's so many things like "ke," but we're giving you some examples in this particular hangout. All right, let's just do another example, yeah? Yeah.、Uh, for example, like I'm now going. 我不去 I'm now going. 我不去,不去 Right? If you want to say. 你要去吗？我不去 If If you want to say like. I'm not going. Like tomorrow, it's gonna, tr- it's gonna rain. It's gonna snow. Are you crazy, right? Then you can add the k、exactly. before the bu. Yeah, now you become like 我可不去我可不去 Are you crazy? What, what, does it change at all? If so, let's say、uh, read it once where you emphasize the 我我可不去 Okay, and then read it once where you emphasize the k. 我可不去 but we don't usually emphasize the adverb part.、Mm, okay. Yeah. So、mm-hmm. typically in this sentence, you would still add, and that's kind of the point, right? Is that this "ke" isn't like the actual tone of voice; it's just an extra word, but it adds tone by being there. Yeah,、right? it's something that、um, it's a little bit different from English, but、uh, you'll get used to it very quickly. Just the, it's just a different language, a different way of thinking. So how would you translate this using the tone of voice? So 我可不去 would that be I'm not going? Or would that be I'm not going? Let me think. Is、um, it more the emphasis on you not going, or is it the emphasis on the not? So let me ask you this question: If I say, "Oh, it's raining tomorrow," are you crazy? I'm not going. So I guess it's not part. Yeah, I think、yes. that would be the not. Yeah.、Uh, yeah.、Mm-hmm. Cool. So like, yeah, "ke" yeah. is all about emphasizing the negative, the、right. no, I'm not doing something. What ke 不要 What ke 不去 Right. So if you look "ke" up in the dictionary, probably it will say "ke" means. Adds emphasis,、yeah. which isn't actually that helpful, right? Yeah, if you look up anything like、uh, in the dictionary or a grammar book, you always see something like add emphasis, but probably、like, that will throw you off. Yeah, that's the easy way to to define it, and it is true. But I think this kind of discussion is really helpful because it puts it into context of real language, right? What could what you is、yeah. a way of saying I'm not going or I'm not going. Right, but if you have to translate it, I would say could is like there's no way I'm doing something, and could is usually、uh, connected with like a, a boo, right? Yeah, you'll actually find. So if you start to think about this and analyze Chinese and English translations, you'll find sometimes that it will automate. Like you know, some translators will include that, like you said, there's no way I'm going.、Mm-hmm. But there's actually also ways to say that in Chinese. So, for example, or the word "really" is a good example.、Mm. I'm really not going. It's not like you're gonna say "wo jin de bu qu," right? So, but we add that in English sometimes to make sure the "k" is included in the translation,、mm-hmm. but only 
the only reason that's in there is to add that emphasis, but in Chinese, it's not like an extra word, right? It truly is just there to make the boo more powerful, mm -hmm. right? if, the, that, the, if that makes sense. The purpose <laughs> of the exa example is to tell you that in Chinese, there's something similar to English, which is that we still use the facial expression and everything, you know, we still have emotions. We are emotional people, okay? So we can express emotions, but we just have extra tools, which is adding extra word. That's just the uniqueness of Chinese. So but, let's see a video. Yeah, let's watch a clip. So this is actually from our Upper Intermediate Conversational course, and it's Yang Yang's mom. And uh, <laughs> she's speaking in Chinese naturally. They're in the market, walking around, looking for stuff, shopping. And she uses this k to emphasize something. And it's explained in the lecture afterwards. And we'll watch. So, All right. OK, let's watch. There's no way I'm going to eat it. If you taste it, you have yeah, to so buy his. To use the no way. We've learned ke before as a way of emphasizing in Chinese. 你还记得这个例子吗? 我可不知道. I don't know. When you say 我不知道, you sound like this. I don't know. When you add ke and say 我可不知道, it sounds like this in English. I don't know. You can think of the sentence as there's no way I know about this. K is that little extra word that adds a certain determined tone of voice to your sentence. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, it is possible to translate k right into no way or absolutely not. But because there are other ways to say no way and other ways to say absolutely, that's also kind of a not really an accurate way of translating k, right? Because it really is just that same way in English where we say, I don't know. It's more about adding tone. It's less about an actual word. Cool. Right. So uh, that's ke, right? Let's give you some other examples of adding words, right? Mm. For example, in Chinese, uh, when we give a list of things, right? You know, let's say, hey, Jason, 你周末喜欢做什么? What do you like to do during weekends? Um, uh, what do I, do you want me to actually answer? Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know. 看看电视. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just say them like as a list. So I like to maybe, we'll say, 玩电动. Mm -hmm. Or wan yo si, right? Mm -hmm. In Taiwan they say dian dong. So wan yo si, play mm -hmm. games. Um or uh yeah. Chi fa. Chi fa, okay. Oh, chi fa. Okay, good. So chi fa shui Okay. So uh, when Chinese people when you so in English, when you answer that question, mm. let, let me ask you that question in English, okay? What do you like to do during weekends? Uh, I like to eat some food. I like to, let's see, maybe play some games or, uh, you know, watch TV. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, yep. so uh, just stop right there. So what were you doing that you suddenly changed from a list, mm. like a very dry, factual list, watching TV, yep. eating food, sleeping, to some sleeping, da, 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 da. right? So your tone of voice yeah. changed in English, right? So how yep. do we do that in Chinese? It's similar. Can we say, 看看电视, 吃吃饭? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you can't do that, right? 看电视, that is really funny, though. <laughs> 吃饭, and that, that, that's making that mistake again where you're importing the English intonation into Chinese. And not only will that screw the tones up, but it will also sound weird, right? Because mm -hmm. that's not the way people do it. So what do we do? So yeah, how do you make, <laughs> how do you make a list of sound? Of, and by the way, before we uh, give this example, it's really about you when you have a list of stuff that you're not, you know, Maybe the list is longer. Maybe the things you're doing, they're not that important. It's like when you're just saying, I don't know, maybe a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of that. So it's like that feeling, right? Right. How do you do that in Chinese? Right. So what we do is that we double the verb. So kan shu means to read. Then you just double the verb part. Kan kan shu, right? And let's say you browse the internet. Shang wang means browse the internet. Browse the internet. Then you double the shang part. Shang shang wang, and then. 睡觉 is to sleep, then 睡睡觉, you know, just, you know, you double the verb, so it sounds to, it sounds like, like, take some sleep, da 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 da, da right? So yep. that's how we do that in Chinese. And you don't, you don't translate these, right? It's not like you what, read, read books, go, go, internet. So it's, it's just adding tone without having anything else to translate. Exactly, right? but in translation, probably will be just, oh, I, 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 I watch a movie, I yeah. see a TV. So you won't be able to 
sense that tone of voice or emotions yeah. behind the translation. But that's why the point of our hangout is to give you that subtlety and the nuances of、mm. the language, right?、Uh, which you can't actually find like in a regular textbook.、Um, Right. We have actually so、And、once again, it,、yeah. this is actually also <laughs> Yang Yang's mom,、uh, and she had another great example of this where she's giving a list of the things she does after she retires, right? And it's very much that kind of oh this and that. That's how you would say it in English, but she does it in the Chinese way. So let's take a look. 主要是我呢有时间呢我就是上上网，上上网呢看看股市。主要是我呢。有时间呢，我就是上上网，上上网呢，看看股市。Mainly, I when I have time, I just surf the web, surf the web, check the stock market. We see 主要是 here, which we learned before, means mainly. Also, there's a no after wa. Which is mostly used as a filler word here, or to mark a pause. This is kind of like I will in English. This is different from the follow-up question na. Let's call the use of na here the pause na. Next, we have 我就是 which means I just in this context. This is followed by a list starting with 上上网 We learned 上网 means to surf the web or go online. And 上上网 has the same meaning. We have seen the structure of verb, verb, object before, like in 看看书 In English, you can use tones and intonations to express your feelings. But in Chinese, since tones are used to express diff different meanings, we then resort to extra words to convey tones and feelings. This is a good example here. We double the verb so we can make the sentence sound like this in English. Surf the web, 上上网 read some books, 看看书 etc. Get it? Finally, we have 看看股市 Okay, that's good. 股市 means stock market. So yeah, as you can see, what we do in these lessons is take the real language. We didn't ask her mom to speak that way to provide an example of what it sounds like when you make a list, right? You're just talking to her, and what comes out. Is a really valuable lesson in how to show, you know, express this kind of feeling using language without necessarily changing the tone,、mm -hmm. right?、Uh, obviously, when we're asking our mom, so what do you do after retirement? So she, her、uh, tone of voice or emotions at that moment is like really nothing much,、just、right? So I just do something here, something there. Nothing but she didn't. But she didn't、about. go. 看看书，上上网 You know,、right. you didn't use this English kind of elongating. To make the list seem different, right? Exactly. So,、uh, in lots of textbooks or maybe other Chinese learning programs, they will say、uh, doubling the verb means the casualness, which is totally correct.、Mm. But going beyond that is really、yeah. just this、uh, um, the tone of voice that actually can match English. Yeah.、Um, and also, I want to point out that like the two clips you saw here are from our UICC course, and actually, a majority of our UICC course, eighty percent of the instructional language is actually in Chinese. Yeah. And the reason these two particular clips are in Chinese are in English. Are, are in English because we're talking about the nuances of the language that's really hard to explain in Chinese. So then we resort to English to explain the. The subtleties of the language. Yeah, so when things get really tricky or really nuanced, then we use English, and that, that that's actually part of that's a feature, right? That's what we want、uh, because we're teaching Chinese and plain English, meaning that when things are really difficult to understand, we use the English language speaker perspective to kind of explain things to you, and then from there you can take it on your own and、exactly. go forward with it.、Um, so should we just give them one more example of this adding extra words? So the 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 pang pang yeah yeah so we we talked about being able to double up a verb right to add this casualness well there's another thing you can do which is doubling up an adjective to make something seem like less offensive or more cute so this is a different way of saying the exact same thing but it expresses a totally different tone of voice so if you just say straight up ta ham pang so he is very fat or, or fat, he、yeah. is fat.、Yeah. Right, that's kind of a rude thing to say, right? If you looked at a little baby, oh, ta ham pang, that might be kind of like, hey, that's my baby. Why are you saying that about my baby? Right. But if you double that adjective and put a de on the end and say ta pang pang de, 
not only has it become kind of like inoffensive and more casual and more relaxed tone of voice, it's also uh, kind of cute, mm -hmm. right? So doubling things in Chinese, especially adjectives, is always considered kind of cute and friendly. So it adds that friendly tone of voice. I'm not trying to offend. I'm just it's a cute. He's a cute kind of fat, like chubby, right? Right. Um, and just the other day, someone was asking me, "How do you say chubby in Chinese?" And、mm. I was thinking really hard. I'm like, "You say fat, fat." Yeah, <laughs> fat, fat, <laughs> pang, pang, right? So basically,、yeah. still pang, but I double the pang, and suddenly, because chubby doesn't sound as offensive as、mm. fat, right?、So、right. A little chubby, chubby. Yeah. So fun, in English,、right? this is maybe in English we sometimes come up with another word entirely,、mm -hmm. whereas in Chinese you don't necessarily always do that. You can just double the adjective. That's one sneaky、exactly. way to to make it less offensive. Yeah. So for example, if、um, I remember a friend of mine used to describe a guy he was he was she was dating, and she was saying that oh,、uh, I was I was asking her what what does he look like, and she was saying oh, 他的眼睛小小的 So his <laughs> eyes are small, small. But but so she's like, that probably means that she thinks it's not that bad, right? It's right, kind of right. It's cute. Right, right. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of like when we say like teeny tiny. Right, right. right? Rather、yeah. than.、Uh, You know, and th this is a funny cultural point too, because in, in at least to an American, describing somebody's eyes as being small or big is just not something we ever do. But Chinese people often describe other Chinese people using the size of their eyes. Wow, his 眼睛很大，他的眼睛大大的 right? It's like this way to emphasize and to make it sound more cute and interesting. And also, just when you like double the adjective, suddenly your words don't sound. Fat, like I'm sorry, flat and factual anymore. It sounds、mm. like vividly. It's almost like you're describing. It's like I'm saying, oh,、um, like he's fat versus oh, he's a little fat, right? So like, there's a little bit more emotions going on when you add little extra words. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So these are the three examples we want to give you. There's actually,、uh, real quick, I want to say there's a couple more that、uh, maybe we'll do some other time, or we can talk about during the Q and A that we decided not to include just for the sake of time.、Um, but there's so many more of these extra special words you can use to change your tone of voice. But we really just wanted to give you three that you could like go outside and use today that are easy to use. Right,、uh, and throughout our lessons, including both be,、uh, beginner conversational, intermediate conversational, and intermediate conversational, we have all these explanations of, of the language subtleties and nuances. We woven we, into yeah, we woven yeah. into the whole entire series. Yeah, that's like we mentioned before. That's like our one of our most important principles of the entire program is that you use native language, so you naturally kind of absorb this tone of voice, cultural kind of. Intonation、uh, lesson while you're learning with the materials and everything in the store right now because of our six month six year anniversary is thirty percent off. <laughs> so go check out the website.、Uh, go to yochinese.com. We have our YouTube channel here, and we love talking to people on YouTube and doing these hangouts. But the real lessons, you know, that that takes place on the website. So check out yochinese.com. Yochinese.com. Sign、yeah. up and、uh, yeah, check out the store page for the the really good sale prices that we're having right now. Great. All right, so let, now let's take some questions from our students, and I'm pretty sure.、Uh